We're just learning that government has released its economic reconstruction and recovery plan. Now, for an economy that's been on a downward spiral, worsened by the coronavirus pandemic, what does government really plan to achieve? Some of the objectives include the implementation of reforms to stimulate growth and building state capacity. All infrastructure development program and industrialization are part of that plan. ENCA's political editor, Voyum Voko, is uh, with us now, I imagine, with a first sight at that plan. My initial response for you, good afternoon to you, is uh, finally. Finally, there is uh, something uh, on uh, the table, but uh, just uh, from uh, uh, going through it uh, once, nothing jumps out, nothing says, wow, um, uh, this is uh, uh, going to take our country forward. Perhaps um, uh, we are yet to get into the detail of uh, what the document actually means and says. Um, for now, though, it looks like uh, there's a long list um, stating the problem, uh, the challenges that we all know we are facing, uh, but also then followed by a list of things that would have to be done. The hows um, are not really um, in this document. Uh, hopefully, when uh, the people who have been given various tasks um, to do the various departments and agencies uh, then begin to talk about uh, what it is exactly that they will be doing hopefully there will be a lot more clarity but um, it's no different from uh, I mean the things that are ca captured here are the same things that uh, the president um, was has been talking about uh, the things that need uh, to be done and uh, who uh, and how uh, he hopes they are going to take us forward. Everything from uh, the infrastructure build, what needs to happen in the ICT uh, space, uh, as you saw last week, uh, ICASA starting to talk about the, um, uh, the, the auctioning of the spectrum. You've already seen, heard uh, Minister Togo Didiza uh, talking about the 700,000 hectares of land that are going to be released uh, to bring in more farm, uh, uh, farmers, in, especially black farmers, um, to ensure that uh, we get, uh, uh, we are more food secure than we are at the moment, but at the same time, uh, you're scaling uh, the people who are working in that space. Nothing really jumps out to say, uh, uh, look, we, things are going to uh, change more drastically than what has been said. Let me ask you this notwithstanding the fact that in a process like this, consensus is critical, um, is part of the problem, you think, uh, that uh, too much consensus has been sought? Uh, and that there has perhaps been too much compromise that's made and that has prevented some very hard decisions from being made? I don't really think it's a question of uh, a consensus because if you can't agree um, with people as has been the case, uh, for example, with very specific proposals uh, that business and labor have put forward, you then move uh, forward uh, with what you believe um, is a fact. In other words, uh, the failure to... Uh, uh, um, rich consensus hasn't previously stopped the government from doing what um, it wants um, to do. The reality is that the things that a government would have gone ahead and done have actually not done the trick and that is what um, uh, is, 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 is the problem or has been the problem in, in the past. So it's not consensus isn't really what is holding uh, things up. It is the reality that the trick, the, the, the things that have been put on mm. the table have actually not uh, done the trick. All right, well, thanks for breaking that on this uh, program. Uh, Voyum Voko is our political editor. I'll let you get back uh, to uh, continue reading it. In the meantime, though, joining us uh, via Skype from the uh, Center for Economic Development and Transformation, we have economist uh, Duma Kubule. Duma, good afternoon to you and welcome. I don't know if you've been listening to our political editor, Voyum Voko, essentially uh, saying to us, nothing really new, nothing startling, nothing jumps out. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it or if you've got wind of it yet, but... Uh, if you have, uh, do you have an early assessment? If not, what is the purpose of this? What does this plan need to achieve? You know, Vuya was correct um, in his analysis of the documents. You know, Jeremy, we are in a once in a century pandemic and economic depression. And the government is 
recycling the same old ideas that it's been talking to us about for the last two decades. I gave it to an economist friend of mine, and she says, Do my, this looks like it was written by an intern. It's a shambles of a document that is not taking seriously the challenges facing our country. I cannot understand why the president is being so obstinate. Um, it is obvious what needs to be done. Our economy, the problem, the core problem in our economy is that too little people have got too little money to purchase the goods and services that the companies are willing to produce. So there's nothing that will get us out of this crisis except the injection of new money into the economy. Now, if you look at the document, it's got a long implementation plan, maybe 20, 30, 40 things that have to be implemented. Not one of them is costed. So everything over 48 pages is just a wish list. And seven months into this once in a century pandemic to be producing a, a wish list, the government is not taking the people of South Africa seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the, they want to they, they want to achieve this infrastructure development plan without putting any money into it. You know, it's it's just it's like a process of alchemy where they want this thing to happen. And a former cabinet minister was telling me this morning, you know, it's like the third marriage. It's, it's a triumph of hope over experience. <laughs> so many times. Yeah. All right. So the question is, how do you fund a wish list? And I would come right back at you and say, maybe they haven't costed it because there isn't any money. Well, you know, what? It, it, it's almost like cabinet, the president, they're living in a policy bubble um, in the sense that um, the civil society, people like myself and hundreds of other people throughout society, they've come up with so many ideas of how to finance this response. Let me give you an example. Um, People who have been talking to the government for years about the UIF that it had a surplus of about 100 to, more than 150 billion rands. And so the issue went to NEDLEC and government couldn't give a reason why we can't use the surplus. So we used the surplus to pay people who have been temporarily laid off. Now, guess what? After we've paid 50 odd billion, there's still 100 billion rand in that kitty. Why can't we spend it? That's what I'm trying to say. So there's so many innovative, innovative ways that we can finance this. And I just have to mention, two days ago, the chief economist at the World Bank, Carmen Reinhardt, she's a so-called expert on debt issues. And she says, you know, you have to first fight the pandemic and you figure out later how to pay for it. And she says developing countries have to borrow more money to pay for, to pay for the response to this pandemic. She said it's justified. Let's sort out the details later. Yeah. Just a final question. So we have the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan. Um, who actually runs it? Who's in charge of this? Is it the president himself? Does this fall on the shoulders of the finance minister? Or is this something that we're very good at in this country? Do we run it by committee? I think it's run by committee. There's a little graph at the bottom of the document that explains the new structure that's going to run this thing. I just have to mention my biggest disappointment in this document is that there are two things, and um, you're talking to Vui about consensus. There is a consensus around the ESCOM at NEDLAC. It doesn't appear in this document. Number two, um, so it's not about lack of consensus. There was consensus and for them not to be addressing the balance sheet of ESCOM, which is the most important issue in South Africa now. It's, it's, I don't understand. And the second thing, we had all hoped that there's going to be a mass employment strategy. They're going to allocate 19.6 billion. It was not allocated in the budget towards mass employment schemes. There's nothing of this in this document. So things that we thought had been agreed on, they suddenly disappeared from this document. I can't understand it yet. No, not the kind of news we need just before the weekend. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Duma Kobule from the Center for Economic Development and Transformation. He is an economist.